If you're selling digital downloads on Etsy or any other site, it can be a bit intimidating when you think about all the bundles, all the different file types, and what sizes you should be making for your customers. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the different file types and also what sizes I use when I sell digital design bundles. Let's jump in. The first one I wanna talk about is a JPEG file. A JPEG file is a image file. So that's a standard image file. Now I've also got a BMP file, which is a bitmap. And I mentioned that in the, my videos on this channel about tracing bitmaps. These are basically the same files. Now I know there's people out there that are gonna get all up in arms about graphic design and there's different types for different reasons. But when you're selling digital designs, really you just wanna lump them into images and vectors. A PNG file is just, it's an image file that has a transparent background on it. So it's like a JPEG, but it's got a transparent background on it. So typically I will sell JPEGs and PNG files on sites like Etsy, Creative Fabrica, that kind of thing. Now there's also a file type called a DXF file, and that's a cutting file. So you can buy these machines called digital cutters, like a Cricut machine, for example, and they use DXF files in those cutting machines. There's also an SVG file. An SVG file is a scalable vector graphic, and the scalable vector graphic file is an infinitely scalable mathematical formula. It's basically a vector. So the reason people like vectors is because you can scale them up to be really big and they still maintain their crystal clarity. They don't get fuzzy the way an image file does. There's also an EPS file. An EPS file is like a vector, but it's used in programs like Photoshop. The last one I'll just mention really quickly here is the PDF file, which is a portable document format. And that PDF file really is just like a piece of paper in a digital setting. So you can print it through Adobe products into a PDF file and it maintains its cohesion without it being editable. So when I sell digital downloads, really what I'm selling is a bundle comprised of a scalable vector graphic, a PNG file, which is an image file with a transparent background, a JPEG file, which is an image file without a transparent background, but it's easier to load and use, a DXF file, which is a cutting file, and an EPS file, which is like a vector, but it's used in Photoshop and other Adobe products. So whatever graphic software design you use, you wanna know two different types of numbers. One is the actual file size that you're creating, and the other one is the DPI, which is the dots per inch. So I'm gonna go over the file sizes here first. So I'm in Inkscape, which is just a free vector software tool. I'm gonna to go File, Document Properties, and I can see here there's a whole bunch of different size options over on the right-hand side. If I wanna set up my page, which is this rectangle here in the middle, I can set up my page using my width and my height. Now I'm going to go and use PX and that's pixels. So that is generally speaking, a pixel is 196th of an inch. You're gonna see pixels. So when I do width, for example, if I do a width of 4,500 and a height of 5,400 pixels, that's the size of, of palette that would be used in a site like Merch by Amazon, for example. So you can see here, that's a rectangle that I would then use to create a t-shirt design. So if I was selling a t-shirt design on Etsy, I would typically go with 4,500 by 5,400 pixels because that's the size that somebody buying it could use and upload onto Merch by Amazon, for example. Okay, so a common question that I get on Inkscape is when you're exporting files, you can see here on the right-hand side, I've clicked on my export PNG button and now my little screen opens up and I've got 4,500 is my width and 5,400 pixels is my height. The problem I'm running into though is that if I change this DPI, which is the dots per inch to 300, it makes my image huge. It's 14,000 by 16,000, which is not really what I want. That's too big. So the thing to remember about PNG files is that the default here in Inkscape is 96 and when you export it it actually does show up as 4500 by 5400 pixels. The DPI doesn't really apply to a PNG file. Here's how you do it by the way in Inkscape. I'm stuck on 96 DPI. If I change this to 300 it really monkeys around with the height and the width so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave it as 96. However I want this to actually export at 300. There's a little advanced button right here and when I open it up, you'll see it say, says physical DPI, P-H-Y-S. I'm gonna type in 300 here. Now when I export it, it's going to export it. Looks like it's exporting at 96, but it's really exporting at 300. 
It doesn't really matter in Inkscape if you continue to use this in Inkscape, but if you're using this outside of Inkscape, having this at 300 DPI can be helpful. Here I've got the two documents. One I've exported at 96 DPI. You can see it says 4,500 by 5,400. The other one is 300 DPI. It's the exact same size. It doesn't really do anything. I'm gonna pop this one open. We can see that's the one at 96 DPI. Here's the one at 300. It's essentially the same file. It's the same file size. It's the same file dimensions. Now I do wanna point out if you're saving this just as a vector file as part of your bundle, it doesn't really matter what size it is. So here I'm just gonna click on the little tile and edit pass by node. You can see these are all nodes. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this entire tiger are individual mathematical formulas that make up this black and white design. The same thing down here with the text. When I zoom into the actual P here or the actual Y, you can see there's little individual nodes that make up the actual vector. It's not really an image. So I could scale this to be hundreds of feet tall if I wanted to paint a mural on the side of a building, for example. So all I'm gonna do here is just hit file and save and whatever the size is that comes back at, I'm just gonna save it in my bundle here. I'm just gonna save it and that's the size. I'm actually gonna make a really small copy though, just to show you. I'm gonna scale this right down so we can see now when I zoom in, this is way, way smaller. And now I'm gonna save this as a small file. So Tiger Vector Small. And then we'll just compare the two so we can see the difference. Okay, so I've got my Microsoft Explorer open and I'm gonna open up the big vector here and the big vector is gonna pop up in my screen and we can see here if I scroll, if I make it a little bit smaller, there's the vector. I can scroll right in, I can make it bigger, but it's pretty crystal clear. Well, what about the small one? So I really shrunk it down and now when I open that one up, you can see it's smaller when I open it, but when I scroll in on it, it's still really clear because it's a mathematical formula. It doesn't matter that it happens to just be a smaller file. You just have to zoom in a bit more on it and it's still there. Here we can see my small vector, for example, is 120 KB kilobytes and my tiger vector that's large is 118. It's actually virtually the same size. To create a JPEG file, I typically use a graphic software program like Affinity Photo. I could use Photoshop as well, but in this one here, I'll use Affinity Photo. So I'm gonna go File New and then I'm going to click on Print and then I'm gonna click one of these options here if I wanted to pick one that's standard. So here's eight and a half by 14, 11 by 17. They're already preset, which is really nice. So I'm gonna pick 11 by 17 and then I'll click create. Here's now my palette that's come up that's 11 by 17 inches. So now I'm gonna go and import my file and I'm just gonna import my PNG file that I exported from Inkscape. So here's my picture that I've got. I've got it centered now. And now I can simply click file and I can go to export. And now I'm gonna export my JPEG. So here, it's actually gonna give me my file size, which is fine, because I've got 11 by 17 already set. I've got JPEG, which is my best quality. And then I'm gonna click the export button. Here it'll say JPEG. So I'm gonna say Tiger Affinity. That's gonna be the name of my file that I'm exporting. And when I go into Explorer, I can see now my Tiger Affinity file, just gonna make these larger, my Tiger Affinity file is right here. And I don't worry about the dimensions because the dimensions are pixels. What I do instead is I just right click, go to properties, and in the details, I can see that it's 300 DPI. So I, it's like running it through a printer when you, print a JPEG file. When you save a JPEG file, it's like printing it. It's now 300 dots per inch. So this is how I would do my actual bundle. I'd have my PNG file. I would probably pick this one here. I'll just get rid of this one that's 96. So this would be my PNG file. And then this would be my JPEG file. This would be my DXF file, my cutting file. And then this would be my SVG file. So I can get rid of my small vector. I'll keep the large vector. And now the fifth one that I wanna do is just EPS. And that would be in Inkscape as well. And then I would have my five files. I would then bundle them together and then I would sell them. So I hope you found this video helpful. It's a little bit confusing with all the different file types, but once you get it down and you do it one time, you can just make a note of what you like. The big thing to remember about JPEG files is there's different file sizes. So imagine a JPEG is for when people are putting stuff on their wall at home. It could be like a mini poster, 11 by 14, 11 by 17, eight and a half by 11, that kind of thing. So you could sell just JPEG files, for example, or you could sell just the SVG file. 
or you could sell just the cutting files. You don't have to bundle everything together. So if you're struggling with one type of file, considering dropping it from your bundle and just sell the ones that you're good at. JPEGs are nice and easy, for example, because they're just like pieces of paper that you can print and then people download the file and they print it at home and they put it on their wall. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to check them out. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your digital design business.